Greetings fellow Carbonauts! Nerdy Spaceman here, in for another installment of A Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program. And in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and research some parts and try to build a rocket capable of going not only into orbit, but we'll have enough fuel left over to go all the way into a moon flyby. We're gonna fly by the moon. So before we do that, we're first gonna take advantage of our research. We got a whole mess of science from the previous mission, and that was a grand total of, um, all of the space near and space high science that we could collect. We might be missing a couple biomes here and there from EVA reports from the space near, but that's going to be quite alright. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish off all of these middle sections here, just because it provides us just all the little pieces necessary to make a, little, a rocket work. And then finally the coup de grace would be in the fuel system, which gives us the fuel duct, which is probably the most important part when it comes to building more complicated rockets, and I'll explain that. I'm going to go ahead and start with the fuel duct, and that is going to be the core of our new spaceship design. Back here with this ability, I'm going to use the radial decoupler, um, and potentially the winglets. Um, the nose cones, definitely for the side stages, but the radial decoupler is what lets us build out from the rocket. Instead of just building tall, we can go build wide, and that's going to add us a lot of efficiency and fuel. The rest of the three points are going to be flight control, aviation, and general construction. Um, they're for more specialized craft, but we're going to be using the winglet on uh, on the uh, flight control here and the inline, inline reaction wheel. The cockpit is cool, but we probably won't need to worry about it until we start building jets. In aviation, this is all about jets. You've got your air intake, you've got your basic jet engine, and you've got a whole bunch of wings and rudders. Personally, I'm unlocking this thing for the Delta Deluxe winglet. It is amazing. It is way better than the other uh, winglet over here, and I'll explain that later, but this is probably my favorite winglet there is. General construction, um, the strut connector and the stability enhancers, they just make better rockets. They make sturdier rockets, so if you construct a big wobbly thing that jiggles around, you connect everything together with struts and it will stop all the jiggle. It's actually a really useful part. And the uh, launch stability enhancer, that actually keeps your rocket propped up on the launch pad, so you're not putting all of the weight of the rocket on the engines, which sometimes can cause them to break. So this is great. It also provides electric charge to our rocket, so we can wait at the launch pad for as long as we want, and it would still be fully charged by the time we launch. So that's great. And that is the last of our science. And again, I probably won't be using most of these parts, but I will be using some of them, so it's always a good start. Once past this point, you have to start picking and choosing which of the techs you want because they start getting pretty expensive. I mean, 90 science is a significant amount. We will be getting more and more science the farther away from the system we get. But until that happens, we'll try to specialize soon. Now, first things first, I'm going to talk about that fuel duct. I'm going to start by building us a very simple rocket. It's all about proof of concept here. And I just want to talk about how the ducts work and what they're like super good for like the best parts about them. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw on a swivel engine here then I'm gonna go to the structural and use the radial decoupler. Now the radial decoupler with a little two-way symmetry is like the linear decoupler, the stack decoupler but instead of decoupling straight down and losing all the parts you decouple sideways so what you can do is you can take fuel tanks and put them on the side here and they will decouple from the system and I'll show you how that works First things first, you gotta add some nose cones to make it look good, and some engines, do another swivel engine here, and there we go, we're ready to launch and show you how this works. And the way we have the staging set up now is, the two outer engines are gonna fire, when eventually they run out of fuel, we're gonna decouple those side engines, and then we're gonna fire the central engine, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch. This is just a proof of concept, I'm not trying to get anywhere, I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing and how the different pieces do what. Turning on SAS, and, oh man, this is, I don't even need nearly max throttle, so I'm going down to like a third, just to show you. And here we are, we're going to launch. We can do a little bit more. There we go. And here we are. We're launching, we're straight up, and we're going to be burning our fuel fairly quickly because we don't actually have a lot of uh, fuel in these areas. But um, the whole point is to run out of fuel quickly so I can show you what it looks like when it eventually does run out of fuel. So anyways, fuel comes out. Oh, look, we're moving so fast. I don't really mind. And then the fuel will run out, and then we'll decouple, and then we can turn on the second stage and continue flying. And this is this is how the radial decouplers work. You you add extra power to your rocket, extra fuel. So essentially, I added extra fuel to my rocket on the side as opposed to the center, making it wider than it is taller. 
But anyways, that's enough of that. We revert back to assembly. And let's talk about the different stages that you can do with the um, different staging you can do a way you align the engines. What you can do is you can move this engine down here and have these two going off at the same time. And then you can just decouple this and say, I don't know, add a bigger fuel tank. There you go. Bigger fuel tank in the middle. There it is. And then you can launch that and you'll see what's going to happen here. Now I'm going to throttle up a little faster for two reasons. One, so I can burn my fuel faster. And two, so I can show you what happens when you go with all three engines on at the same time. You have a lot of power. I mean, look at this. Just right off the bat, max throttle SAS. It's just like we're already hitting the sound barrier like right away. We're not even halfway through these fuel tanks. Extremely powerful, even with all the extra weight on it. And then when you have all three engines, you will then decouple these and you'll still keep going, but it's halfway empty, so you, you've already burned through half of the fuel. And we're hitting ridiculous amounts of speed, we're hitting 50,000, already halfway to orbital speed. And our crew pod is overheating, and it's just, it's a lot of power. So what that means is when you build bigger rockets, you can have all of the engines on, and you would actually be able to launch a heavier rocket than you normally would, because you have all the fuel things going. Now the problem is, is that when we, these side decouple, you're already halfway with your fuel. So what you do is you use the fuel duct. This is extremely important, and I'll show you why. I can just feel it there. Now what you do is you start from the outside first, and you go to the inside, and you can tell by the little fuel duct little lines, you get these little arrows, it tells you which way the fuel is going. And what that does is it's going to be draining fuel from here and topping off this fuel tank and symmetrically it's going to drain fuel from here to here so essentially as we're going up we're going to have all three engines on but this fuel tank is going to stay topped off at all times because we're going to be siphoning fuel out of these fuel tanks so these side fuel tanks are going to be depleting faster than uh, they're going to be depleting faster than if they were just attached to one engine because they're depleting at a rate about one and a half engines each you can tell that comes up to three engines and I'll launch this and I'll show you what it looks like Right, and here we go. Turn on the SAS and launch. And here we are. We've got all three engines, not as much thrust, but we're still going pretty quickly. But these fuel tanks here would be draining in a little bit faster than they normally would. Now the fuel level in this engine here, it says it's running out, but when you actually right click and select these tanks, it's still topped off. And it's going to stay topped off until these run out of fuel. Once they run out of fuel, you can decouple them and you've got a full rocket filled with fuel and so you'll actually be able to get a lot farther on those tanks that is what the beauty of the, the fuel ducts do that's what they do they help help build much more efficient rockets they get farther and farther and farther and here we are we're at that mark to which we ran out of fuel and we've got pretty much twice as much fuel it's excellent very 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 fuel efficient when it is so enough of that that's just proof of concept it's essentially what the style of fuel we're going to do I'm going to go ahead and load the Landsmark 2. And I'm going to just get rid of this bottom stage. And we're going to keep this stage because we know it works. We know that this stage works perfectly fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to add side boosters, just like we did on the previous rocket, on the front and on the back here. And then we're going to use that to be able to propel the entire rocket so that by the time we get rid of those side boosters, we'll be in space. So we have a full rocket filled with fuel and in orbit. And that's going to be give us enough fuel to actually get to the moon and do a quick flyby. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the winglets here. I'm going to shift them over 45 degrees so I have room to put my, my boosters here on the front and in the back. The reason I'm doing that is because when we launch, we're going to point our rocket to the east. And if we have two boosters on the side here, they'll act kind of like, you know, like we're surfing, like a surfboard. Because we're only going to have two, that's all we really need. And they're going to act like a surfboard and they're going to help us with the lift and give us a little bit extra control. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the structural. Throw them, uh, throw two for symmetry here. And go find the long fuel tanks here that we just unlocked with the fuel ducts. There we are. Now we could replace these two in the middle, but I don't know, I'm feeling lazy so I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and throw on some of these here. And throw on... Now this is where it gets interesting. We've been using just the, uh, the swivel. If you look at the Reliant here, and we talked about how the fuel efficiency works, when you right click on the Reliant, it'll tell you the ASL in vacuum and in I ASL, which, or sorry, 
the ISP in vacuum and the ISP in ASL. Um, the ISP in ASL is the fuel efficiency in the atmosphere. And you'll notice that the fuel efficiency for these rockets in the atmosphere is higher than the fuel efficiency of these engines in the atmosphere, these rocket engines. That means that the swivel, which is much more suited for higher altitude flight, is actually less fuel efficient than the Reliance at lower altitudes. So this engine is a great workhorse engine. It's going to be great for lifting the rocket off the launch pad to begin with. We're going to pop that down there. It doesn't have gimbling, but we're going to make up that with the deluxe winglet by putting two of those here. And that's going to give us a lot of steering control over the craft. It's going to give us pilot control. And the reason this is going to be better than the other winglets we've unlocked is because if you look at these winglets, they've got this line here that runs down there. I don't know if you can tell. It. Um, there's a better version right here, the tail fin. You can see that, that big line there. That means that when you turn, the whole surface area of the wing turns into it, so the whole thing is a rudder. As opposed to this, the Delta Deluxe, where it's just this little part here that's a flap. So for the majority of the rocket, this is actually going to be a solid fixed rudder, like these little rudders here, these little fins. It's going to be mostly a fin with a little bit of rudder added for steering. This on the other hand, the whole surface area turns into a steering mechanism, and that can be overly effective. It'll turn your rocket way too quickly and you'll, you'll, you know, you have to overcompensate and you'll be just way too, like, steer happy. I'm going to go ahead and add some nose cones on that. And for structural purposes, I'm going to add a strut connector from uh, from this section to this oh no if I don't okay from here to right there there we go what this does now is it connects a very, with a very sturdy rebar um, this engine to this engine so these engines aren't going to be jiggling about because normally they would push force up here and go all the way and only here would it be transferred to the rest of the rocket and that's going to cause these to flare out on their launch and maybe you know flare off to the side or something and they'll, they might rip themselves off or give you an unstable flight especially when you have the rudders here that are going to be applying forces in the different directions so it's very very smart to co connect your engines with a strut to keep the rocket secure now this automatically is, is pretty good we're going to add the uh, final little important touch of the fuel ducts and you put it from again the outside of the rocket to the inside of the rocket there we go and it's going to uh, siphon fuel from here to here. Now right away this is great because we've got more fuel in these tanks than we do in the center. So if we had all three going, we would run out of fuel in the center before we run out of fuel in the sides. And that would just be terrible. So good, thank goodness for us we have these. Make sure our staging is correct. There we go. And then one added little final touch. And we'll add a, a launch stability enhancer. There's two please. Thank you. Right there. And we can drag a little rocket down here and there it is we've got ourselves this is going to hold us up off the launch pad we got ourselves a nice decent rocket now as before i'm going to go ahead and save this this type of staging is called onion staging because the outside layers run out of fuel and then you peel them away and you've got the center that's filled with fuel it's called onion so under that name i'm going to call this the onyx and there we go named after the onion staging we're going to save this and launch now we're not going to be doing any science because we don't have enough time in this video but we're just going to be testing to see if it flies and it works the way we want it to so SAS max thrust and launch it oh we fell down okay so we forgot to stage our rockets well we'll figure that next and it's lifting off it's pretty good but I feel like we can add a little bit more weight to this let's see how much more weight we can add the more fuel we add the longer your engines burn the better off we are so I say we add more weight to this see here what do we got these fuel tanks I think these fuel tanks should be enough there we go throw these on there and uh, there we go I think that should be enough yeah let's do this let's save this and fix our staging here because we put this separate there we go so now we're gonna decouple these and turn on the engine at the same time so there we go and let's experiment here and see if this rocket flies turn on our SAS max out our thrust there we go. That's almost that's almost no difference. Okay, that's fun. All right, let's add a little bit more fuel. We'll add a, one tiny little fuel tank extra. Okay, let's get rid of these. And this is why we have these tiny little fuel tanks because they can give us more 
flexibility on how much fuel we want to add. And there we go. So essentially, we've got two rocket, uh, three rockets, all strapped in parallel with each other, and the two are gonna fuel the middle one here until they run out. And we're gonna get rid of those. Save that and launch. And again, SAS and max thrust. SAS, max thrust, launch, and there it is. I don't think we can, we'll be able to handle much more, fuel, much more fuel than this. But here we are. So we've got these fuel tanks here that are going to be draining. They're going to run out, and it's going to start draining from this one. That's going to start draining. It's going to keep going. Meanwhile, these fuel tanks here are going to be constantly topped off, even though their engine is running at full speed. And that's that's what we want. We want this rocket running off and just forming at its peak, at, at the most fuel efficient way. So essentially we have this center rocket that's even though the engine's running, is being lifted up higher and higher and higher. And eventually these side engines here are gonna run out. By the time they run out, look, we've got so much fuel still left inside of them. These are almost full, so we got tons of fuel. By the time these run out, we'll, we should already be either in space or in orbit. Hopefully we'd be on our way up to space and then we can do the last final push using the swivel here to get us into orbit. And we'll have an entirely full rocket ready to go to go into space. Now, one final touch, just because I'm a little paranoid and I don't like my rockets being unstable in any way, shape, or form, I'm going to go ahead and go to the aerodynamics, and I'm going to add, let's not go overboard, I'm going to add some basic bits. Now, I'm doing these just to keep my rocket stable. I'm paranoid, and I want to make sure that rocket flies in a straight line when I launch it, and it's up there it is. And there we go. Now we've got as many fins. I got fins this way. I've got fins over here, and everything's flying straight and dandy. And I think we're ready to go. One little see here, just to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more struts. You can never go wrong with more struts. And there we go. Add some struts to the. Oh, let's attach to the wrong place. Let's see here. Let's attach it to um, down here. Let's say. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Now the thing about the struts is when you decouple them from these things here, they'll disconnect. So they're not going to stay attached to your rocket. They, the, the decoupler here are synced up to these decouplers as well. So once you disconnect, they'll peel away from the rocket and you'll be fine. Nothing will break in any way. But anyways, this is the Onyx rocket. And in the next episode, I hope to send it into orbit. And from orbit all the way out to do a moon flyby and collect that moon science. Because you know, you can't go wrong with more science. This has been Nerdy Spaceman, stay safe and fly far.